Now today I'm really excited because I'm going to be talking to my dear friend, who also happens to be my makeup artist, Justine Jenkins, aka JJ. Hi Fern. Hi JJ. Uh, today we're going to be talking all about career changes, so if you're feeling a bit stuck and unhappy with where you're at right now, the job that you're in, hopefully we've got some nice tips and advice to help you out. So before we get into our chat, you're going to also do my makeup whilst we have this conversation. Absolutely. What look should we go for today on this haggard face? Well, uh, haggard face, I mean, come on. Mm. I think we're going to go for a really quick and easy, simple summer glow. Oh, we like Ooh. that. Bit so of shimmer. Bit of shimmer, a bit of dew. A bit of dew. We like a bit of dew. We've never we? heard that word before, <laughs> have we? Very dewy. <laughs> um, so I'll let you get cracking and hopefully I won't distract you too much from your... Put the specs on. Specs going on, gang. Here we go. <laughs> Now she can actually see what she's doing, so the makeup will not look like a clown at the end. Helpful. That would be very helpful. So, um, although you've been doing makeup for how many years now? Oh, 20. She's not that old, but we'll say 20. So I started when I was five, yeah. clearly. So 20 years of doing makeup, but before that, you had a whole other career that could not be any more different to where you're at now. This is true. So you worked in the city? I did. I, was, um, I worked for a financial institution, so I was a dealer for um, a private client investment firm. So I basically worked in the stock market. I got into it by mistake, I mean, as you do when you're 18 years old, you, um, I kind of ended up being like an office junior as a temp and then just worked my way up and then eight years later I'm still there, still there. and I'm a dealer. So eight years, I mean that is a long time mm. to be doing a job when you've got this sort of niggling voice inside yes. saying, wait this is not yes. what you want to be doing. So why did you not listen to that gut instinct and that voice? Um, one word, uh, fear. Right. I was always frightened of failing, so yeah. I was like, well, if I fail at my dream job, where am I going to be then? Mm. What's going to happen to me then? So I just didn't try. Mm. And I just remember, it was almost like this tipping point of like this one day I woke up and I thought to myself, Do you know what, today I actually feel more frightened and more fearful of not trying to do what I want to do than I am of actually failing. I'd yeah. lost that fear of failing. The fear then came from not trying. Yeah. And that completely changed everything for me. So that just came out of the blue after, I guess, a lot of... Soul searching. Soul searching and feeling battered down. I guess yeah. you sort of reached this point where you just sort of surrendered to it and went, right, something's got to change Absolutely. here. Something's got to give. Because sometimes you have to jump into the void. Yeah, you've got you, to. You can't know everything that's going to happen. Mm. There's this, somebody said this to me once and I've taken it through my life, it's that your gut is the only thing that will never lie to you. Yeah. So if you feel it in your gut, even if it seems like the craziest thing to do, do just it. do it because that is your sort of universal message. When you first started to talk to people in your life about the fact that you wanted to leave your seemingly high-flying, <laughs> high-earning career, yeah. what was the reaction? Well, of course, all my friends were like really supportive, as friends are, and they're like, "Go for it, JJ! You yeah. know, that would be amazing." My family, because they love you so much and want you, want to protect you, mm. would, were just like, "You're crazy! You're actually crazy!" Um, where I worked in the city was not far from the Barbican, and at the time, the Royal Shakespeare Company was situated there, so lots of plays going on, and it kind of. I had this laser point focus at, at this point. I was like, right, this is definitely what I want to do. And then all of a sudden, because I knew what my goal was, all of my sort of decisions kind of led to that goal. Yeah. I obviously reduced my lifestyle down to nothing. I had no money, but I was really happy. Yeah. And so it didn't matter. You realise money doesn't really matter. It makes life easier. Bit easier. It allows you to have nice things, do nice things. Um, not worry so much. Your inner happiness is actually quite a separate commodity from that. It, it really doesn't is. Correlate, yeah. It really is. So when you were working in the city and you were dashing about with your power bob haircut, <laughs> I was <laughs> uh, looking the part. Yeah. In the eighties, how do you make that step and think, right, I'm going to say goodbye to that lifestyle and truly know that that's the right thing to do? And you have to breathe through it, listen to that, and just go with it. Go with it. Yeah. And literally a week later, my friend and colleague called me up and she went, I've got this really, show, this new show I'm doing, I don't know if you want to come and be involved, 
don't know what it's going to be like, no idea, it's called X Factor, I don't know what's going to, you know. It's called X and Factor. And of course, this is where I met the gorgeous fan. Yes. It's another lovely moment so of serendipity, yeah, absolutely. which we love. And you've got to be open to that, haven't you? And that's, absolutely. if you shut other doors, stay open, open heart, open mind, the right people come in. This is what I was saying earlier. The right opportunities. Doing your bit, and then I think the universe sends you the people yeah. that are right for you. It's so. so true. I think kindness is so it's underestimated. It's so underestimated, in, underrated. In, in a lot of jobs, people just think, oh, I in need life. to be a bit elusive and cool, and people will think that I'm really edgy. And it's like, yeah, it's I've definitely got no time for that. I want to work no. with lovely people, and I think most of the people that I work with do you want to also work with really nice people and because it's fun. If you want to be successful, you've got to keep on top of everything. You know, it's important to try and create the life that you want. Otherwise, you'll just, you'll just put up with second best and nobody wants that. Yeah. And I think you're always learning. And also, I think I, I did another jump into the void by becoming a Paul Tree makeup artist. Sort of yes. About five years ago, I discovered that there was still a lot of animal testing involved in the beauty industry, which I found abhorrent. So I kind of, you know, made a stand and, and vowed to raise awareness and only support cruelty-free brands. So that meant I had to get rid of 90% of my kit. Mm. You know, it's important to try and create the life that you want. Otherwise, you'll just, you'll just put up with second best and nobody wants that. Yeah. So what would your tips be? Well, I think I would say if you, if you know what you want to do, research it. And I would also say if you don't know where to start, just start. Do yeah. something, anything. Like you did voluntary work, exactly. do it for free. Do it for free. Because what's important about that is changing your energy. Mm. Because if you do something different in your life, it changes all of the energy around you and, and it makes you feel better about yourself that you're actually taking a baby step mm. to mm. reaching your goal. Your decision making process is null and void. Yeah. You're, you're making decisions for that goal and if you don't know what that goal is, how are you going to know what yeah, decisions to make? Yeah, it's very true. It just feels very chaotic if you haven't got that totally. goal in mind. Yeah, I very much relate to that feeling quite a lot. And age doubt. isn't a hindrance. I was nearly 30. Yeah, that's a I really changed. good point. I'm actually going to be, a uh, lady is going to be assisting me and I think she's 51. Amazing! Yeah, and I, I love like, that. No, it's absolutely fine, you know. Yeah, I think getting practical experience is probably practical quite a big one, isn't it? Practical experience is massive because mm. you don't want to put all of that time and energy into something and then go, you don't like no, it. No, I'm not feeling yeah, this, you know. Absolutely. It's wasting your time, wasting everybody else's time. Yeah. And another tip I've got is uh, to be gracious and kind to everybody you meet because I think that what you put out there comes back to you. People notice that and I think that it, with the universe, the way energy works, what you put out there you get back. Another quote, coming thick and fast. <laughs> You're going to laugh at me, it's like a real oh no. old school industry one. It's, be nice to everybody on the way up because you don't know who you'll meet on the way down or who you'll need on the way down. It's all of these steps, all of this jumping into the void, all of this believing in yourself. It's all to kind of really helps to boost your self-esteem. Mm. And the stronger your self-esteem gets, the more in touch with that feeling you are. And you make those decisions that are right for you, even yeah. if they seem crazy to everyone else. Yeah, exactly. But the trend. Well, thank you so much for sharing your lovely story with us today, JJ. Oh, it's been an honour, Fernie. Thank it's you, darling. Nice. And hopefully a lot of people out there who have watched this that might be feeling those feelings yeah. um, will get some strength and courage and oh, ideas and inspiration from it. I hope so. It. If I can encourage one person to really go for their dream career, to find that inner happiness, then it would be wonderful for me. That's been today's film. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to watch more of my videos, all you need to do is subscribe to Pretty Upfront, and I'll see you soon.